Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tutorial Tuesday. I'm your host, how dare you do that to those poor little fruits. Today we'll be making, you guessed it, a funk song. Uh, hopefully it improved from what I used to do before. This will be the 2020 version. It's actually the song I released on SoundCloud about a week ago. This one, this project's kind of hilarious because I literally could not stop changing stuff out with it. But I think it's pretty cool because this is the actual process I go through with making songs. Uh, you make something and you're like, you know what, I can make this better and then you switch it out. So we're actually gonna follow the real process of me making a song today. Anyways, no jokes, let's just jump into it. Here's our list of ingredients we need here. All right, so first off, watch your favorite TV show. Once you're done with that, you're gonna wanna pull out Serato sample, pull in a random sample. If you don't have samples, then maybe find some on YouTube, find some random songs. I don't know, just find songs you like to, to make into other songs you like. I clicked find samples, then it'll randomly assign samples for you. I like the sample. I like the vibe. So I'm gonna pitch everything down by selecting all, and then bring down the pitch too. You can move the markers up here if you need to. I'm gonna lay down this sample pattern for now. I'll probably replace it in a little bit. Next, I'm gonna bring in some vocals. Sometimes I like to do vocals right after I get the sample. I know it's kind of weird, but it works. This one isn't bad. Wait, I think I'm on a slip in here. Gotta move it around to get the time right. You may notice I already have the BPM in the title of all the acapellas. That helps make it easier to warp. I use mixing key in order to find them all. So I put some hi-hat samples into a drum rack. Then I'm gonna put an arpeggiator in front of it. So I can easily get some fast hi-hats. Right now I'm recording a temporary hi-hat. Just need something rhythmic in there. I guess if there's one thing you could take away from this tutorial, it's don't be afraid to make a shittier thing starting off than what you're going for in the end. Because if you compare this to the end product, um, it's a pretty big difference. Oh, I guess I changed the high too, just temporarily. Yeah, the pattern's actually pretty dope. So yeah, as I said before this, I kind of had a feeling I was going to have to change the sample loop. So I'm going to extend the loop, keep re-randomizing it until I'm happy with it. I think that's it there. You got to move the markers. Make sure the drums line up with your drums. Next, we'll be recording an uh, interesting bass line, hopefully. Uh, I'm gonna drag a sample into the sampler. Hopefully your bass sample is in key. That way it matches with the keys on the keyboard. First, I'm gonna check the tuning by playing a few octaves up, just feeling it out a bit. Um, I got rid of that constant hi-hat. I'm all over the place today. I'm gonna set up the glide here real quick. Still figuring out the bass tuning apparently. The percussion sounds kind of bare at the moment, so um, I'm gonna see if we can find a quote unquote top loop. This is a great way to make your percussion sound a lot thicker. Hold the phone. Did you just use a loop in a tutorial? Yeah, I'm calling the police right now. Yep. Yeah, he did it again. Alright, I'm looking for different vocals, I guess. I'm not overthinking it. Shut up. You are. I mean, like, a lot of these vocals kind of go with it. It doesn't, like, fully go with it. If I were to put it on a percentage scale, these these match about 70%. I want it to match at least 90%. So, um, yeah, sometimes you gotta go over the fence to find out you had it a lot better at home. So let's go back to the little vocals. Alright, now I'm trying to make a B section. I'm gonna do this by duplicating the sample loop, and I'm gonna mute one of them, and on the other one, I'm gonna randomize the sample again, or move it around or something. And then in between that, I might talk to my friends on Discord, apparently. Oh, shit, there it is. There's the B section. I wanted to add some weird housey drums with the outro, so I found a little loop to use in the end of the mix. He's doing it again. Wait, it's not a loop? Why'd he call it a loop? This guy's a fucking more. Now I'm redoing the bass in the B section. Gonna use the same instrument. All right, now I'm figuring out the bass on the B section. That's not the right note. 
pitched up the bass an octave or two to make it easier to hear the tuning. Here's a rough cut of the bass in part two. I'm gonna tweak it a little more in a bit. I don't think it's finished. All right, we gotta pan that one hi-hat with this auto pan. This will definitely make or break the song. You know what time it is, right? No, silly, it's FX time. Okay, cool, now I'm starting to record some FX. Especially the way I do this is I'll record a bunch of, I'll put a bunch of FX into a drum rack, and then I'll just start hitting buttons, and then I'll delete the ones that don't sound cool. I'll leave the ones that sound kinda cool. And yeah, I basically just do that over and over until I'm done. I don't do it through the whole song, but just whatever section I'm working on, you know. All right, still recording FX. Definitely need a gunshot, you know. All right, I'm adding more FX. Jesus, this is like half the video. Check out my great notes, I leave myself in my DAW. Then I moved everything back a bit to give us some more room to work on the intro. Um, I added a little drum break for the middle section. At first I put it in the intro. I warped it, just cause. Then I set up a pitch drop at all the key dynamic changes of the song. So basically at the intro and after the breakdown. Then I decided to have this FX riser combo at the end of the song here and have just that and the outro drums play. All right, cool, now we're gonna do the fun part, mixing. All right, so um, we're gonna start off with subtractive mixing. We're gonna cut some lows in order to make room for the kick. We're gonna do that in the sample. I'm gonna cut little harmonic dips here, just like this, maybe two or three of them. Next, I'm gonna side chain the kick to the bass. Pretty simple stuff. Show you guys this a million times before. Next, I'm gonna maximize the drums. I don't know why I use this instead of a limiter. Kinda doesn't really make sense, but it has the same effect. So whatever, right? Now I'm gonna put a maximizer on the sample. I decided to link them together. That way it works more like a limiter. Does that make sense? I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. I generally find myself having a slower release on uh, the sample than I would on the drums. Now I'm gonna cut room from the snare and the hi-hat in the melody. I'm gonna do this by taking the same dips from the kicks earlier. And I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna move it up and I'm gonna add an extra dip uh, higher up to make room for the hi-hat. Next I'm gonna make the bass more mono because I wanna make sure it doesn't interfere with the melody. I want the melody to be stereo and I want the bass to be more mono. I copied the subtractive EQs over to the FX and vocal tracks too. Now I'm gonna set up a few super cool, super unique beat repeats. It's literally just on the one fourth setting. Kinda had a feeling that's what I was going for, so let's really quit. Now I'm gonna draw in some automation for when I wanna enable this sexy ass beat repeater. I quickly edited the FX in Audition. I find it the easiest app to, to edit volumes real quickly, so I just did that real quick in there. All right, done, brought it back in. I want the second drop to be more interesting, so I'm gonna add some more unique percussion to it. So I'm just gonna bring a bunch of percussion to a drum rack as usual, and start messing around. Now I'm gonna clean this up a bit here. brought in a tuner to check the tuning of the percussion. They do sound a little toned, that's why. Now I'm gonna use one copy of FabFilter Pro-Q to cut lows, and then I'm gonna use another one to boost basically all harmonic frequencies. This one percussion sound I was using had delay on it, and the delay was kind of detuned, and I, I really fucking hated it, so um, I cut off the delay, and I put my own delay on it. And um, I set it up to the same settings, and this one isn't detuned, so that's that's kind of nice. Uh, this one percussion sound had a reverb on it, but I didn't really like the way the reverb rang out. I think it was too short or something, so I basically created a little fade on it and put my own reverb on it to make it sound more natural and correct for the song. At this point, I had the idea to change up the vocals a little bit on the second drop. I'm gonna keep trying different vocals until I get one that sticks. I tried vocals for like the next 15 to 20 minutes. I have all the acapellas labeled by BPM here. I try to pick something somewhat near the BPM, that way it doesn't sound too weird when we warp it. And what I was going for with this song was something kind of fast, not like triplet flow or anything, but moderate speed and goes along with the song. Maybe like 16th or 8th notes or something. Alright, so now I'm going to add groove to everything. 
just to make sure it's a little spicier, you know? So I'm going to select all, and I'm going to open up the groove pull down here, and I'm going to pick groove, um, and I'm just going to make it very slight. Nothing too crazy. I'm not going to really adjust the velocity, just the timing a little bit. Make sure when you select all before this that you have every clip open in your groups. Otherwise, it may leave out one of them. Okay, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned something on making a funk song. If you guys are interested in my other funk tutorials or other things useful for making funk songs, I'll link a whole playlist down in the description. Make sure to check out my Discord if you haven't. We have some super awesome, cool conversations in there. And we actually have feedback streams, at least weekly, sometimes more than that. And we also are planning on having beat ciphers every so often. Uh, maybe once a week, bi-weekly, I'm not sure yet, but I'm, I'm sorting it out right now. Make sure to check out Blue Mod if you haven't. They do a great job mixing and mastering. I know this because I am them. Get 20% off with the code down in the description, code Weaver. Tune in next time when I give you guys a drawing tutorial. I drew that. Shout out to my patrons, you guys are awesome. You're now listening to Future Collective. The link to check them out is down in the description.